Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm your instructor, Jim Pytel. Today's topic of discussion is complex numbers expressed using polar format. Our objective is to introduce complex numbers using polar format and learn to mathematically manipulate complex numbers using polar format. This lecture is predicated in the assumption the viewers watch the complex numbers rectangular format lecture available at the Big Bad Tech channel. If you haven't watched this lecture yet or only dimly recall its contents, please take the time to do so now. If you recall in the aforementioned lecture, we learned to express a complex number using rectangular format as a pair of coordinates, a real horizontal x component plus or minus an imaginary vertical y component times j. Additionally, we learned that the acts of addition and subtraction of complex numbers using rectangular format essentially boils down to keeping the real with the real and the imaginary with the imaginary, a task even a snowboarder has a realistic chance of not messing up too badly. While functional and well-suited for addition and subtraction of complex numbers, in my personal opinion, rectangular format doesn't really convey the true nature of a complex number and is somewhat unwieldy when performing multiplication and division. An alternative means of expressing complex numbers, polar format, dispenses with the multidimensional aspects and gets straight to the point, namely a magnitude pointed in a specific direction. A complex number expressed in polar format includes a magnitude, z, acting at a specific angle, theta. Angular position is measured in units of degrees, using the right side of the horizontal axis as the origin. Positive angles up to 180 degrees are rotation in a counterclockwise direction. Negative angles up to negative 180 degrees are rotation in a clockwise direction. This means complex numbers expressed using polar format with angles between zero and positive 90 degrees places us in the first quadrant, those with angles between positive 90 degrees and positive 180 degrees places us in the second quadrant. Those with angles between 0 and negative 90 degrees place us in the fourth quadrant. And finally, those with angles between negative 90 degrees and negative 180 degrees place us in the third quadrant. We'll examine means of converting between rectangular and polar format and vice versa in later lectures. Today's lecture will limit ourselves to just the act of multiplying and dividing complex numbers task especially well suited for polar format. To multiply a pair of complex numbers expressed using polar format, one multiplies the magnitudes and then adds the angles. To divide a pair of complex numbers expressed using polar format, one divides the magnitudes and subtracts the angles. 2. Easy. Consider complex number A with a magnitude of 7.9 at an angle of positive 60.5 degrees and complex number B with a magnitude of 10.5 at an angle of positive 27.3 degrees. A is in the first quadrant, as is B. If we're being asked to perform the operation A times B, we multiply 7.9 times 10.5 and add 60.5 plus 27.3 degrees. To obtain the result, 83 at an angle of 87.8 degrees. If we're asked to perform the operation A divided by B, we'll divide 7.9 by 10.5 and subtract 27.3 degrees from 60.5 degrees. To obtain the result, 0.7524 at an angle of 33.2 degrees. Note I've taken the trouble to redraw the results of A times B and A divided by B using different graphs. This is not only necessary because the acts of multiplication and division shift the scale of the result, this also implies that the act of multiplication and division of complex numbers yield complex numbers with wholly different properties. This step isn't absolutely necessary for today's lecture. However, when we apply these techniques to electrical phenomenon, I find this additional step helps individuals conceptualize the results they obtain. As an example of what I'm trying to convey is the expectation that voltage times current, two different yet related properties, yields power, a wholly different property altogether. I like to think of electrical properties using three different yet related domains, the first being impedance, a property roughly equivalent to resistance, the second domain being shared by voltage and current, and the third and final domain exclusively for power. Like I said, this will make more sense in later lectures. For now, let's just deal with the numerical results of multiplication and division. 
Let's try a couple more illustrated examples of multiplication and division using complex numbers expressed in polar format. Consider complex number A, with a magnitude of 9.9 .9 at an angle of 83 degrees. Complex number A is still inside the first quadrant. Complex number B has a magnitude of 8.9 at an angle of negative 40.9 degrees. Complex number B is inside the fourth quadrant. When we multiply A times B, we multiply the magnitudes and add the angles taking into account the sign. To obtain the result of 88.1 at an angle of positive 42.1 degrees. If we're asked to perform the operation A divided by B, we divide the magnitudes and subtract the angles taking into account the sign. To obtain the value of 1.1 at an angle of 123.9 degrees. Again, note the results of multiplication and division necessitate the use of different scales because of the size of the resultant magnitude. Consider complex number A with a magnitude of 11.8 at an angle of positive 134.7 degrees. Complex number A is inside the second quadrant. And complex number B with a magnitude of 2.7 at an angle of 66.3 degrees. Complex number B is inside the first quadrant. If we're asked to perform the operation A times B, we multiply the magnitudes and add the angles to obtain a result of 31.9 at an angle of 201 degrees. However, we need to reformat the angle to comply with a positive 180 degrees counterclockwise limitation because positive 201 degrees counterclockwise rotation is more conveniently expressed as negative 159 degrees clockwise. If we are asked to divide A by B, we would divide the magnitudes and subtract the angles to obtain the result of 4.4 at an angle of positive 68.4 degrees. All right, now it's your turn. Put your understanding of multiplication and division of complex numbers making use of polar format to the test with this batch of example problems. By all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. Given the set of arguments, perform the desired operations. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. For our first example problem, A times B results in 8.6 at an angle of negative 128.5 degrees. Note we needed to reformat this angle to comply with a 180 degree limitation in either direction. The result of A divided by B is 5.1 at an angle of negative 83.3 degrees. For our second example problem, a times B results in a magnitude of 40.5 at an angle of negative 165 degrees. And A divided by B results in 1.6 at an angle of negative 52.4 degrees. Note we need to take into account the sign of the angles to obtain a proper angle result. For our third example problem, A times B results in 81.8 at an angle of negative 11.5 degrees. And A divided by B results in 1.2 at an angle of negative 132.7 degrees. Again, note we needed to reformat this angle to comply with 180 degree limitation in either direction of rotation. Finally, for our fourth example problem, A times B results in 63 at an angle of 31.8 degrees. And A divided by B results in 0.5714 at an angle of negative 64.4 degrees. All right, hopefully you did well on that set. Let's briefly examine some special case scenarios involving complex numbers expressed in polar format before I let you go. Complex numbers, given they account for not only magnitude, but also direction, sometimes interact in odd ways. However, if you think about these interactions taking into account direction, they're not as odd as you may initially suspect. Consider a complex number with a magnitude of 5 at an angle of 0. 5 at an angle of 0 could just as easily be expressed as plain old 5 because it's entirely in the real plane. The point being, don't get blinded by all of the angles and complexities of complex numbers and don't forget normal math. 5 at an angle of 0 is just a way of dressing up a regular 5 and making it seem complex. Now let's examine negation of complex numbers using polar format. If we were to negate 5 at an angle of 0, we've got two options at our disposal. First, 
one can either multiply the magnitude by negative 1 and keep the angle the same, or second, keep the magnitude the same and add or subtract 180 degrees to the angle. Using the first method yields negative 5 at an angle of 0 degrees. Using the second method, 5 at an angle of 180 degrees. While these numbers are equivalent, the preferred means of expressing these values when exclusively using polar format is 5 at an angle of 180 degrees since it makes it very obvious we're dealing with an equal magnitude only pointed in the opposite direction. This being said, one can just as easily express either result as plain old negative 5. Again, don't forget normal math. Here's yet another oddity you may run across. Consider complex number A expressed in polar format with a magnitude of 10 at an angle of 0 0.000135 degrees, or 135 micro degrees if there is such a thing. What does this mean? It means exactly what you think it does. At such an astronomically small angle, we can kind of treat it like your lab partner's personal hygiene, i.e. neglect it and just express our value as 10 at an angle of roughly equivalent to 0 degrees. Again, don't lose yourself in the complexities of complex numbers. Don't forget how to round values. All right, that's about enough for today. We'll examine the means of converting between rectangular and polar format and vice versa, more math functions with complex numbers, and the use of scientific calculators in later lectures. In conclusion, this lecture presented complex numbers expressed using polar format, including both a magnitude and a direction. Positive rotation is defined as counterclockwise, and negative rotation is defined as clockwise. Additionally, we will learn to multiply and divide complex numbers expressed using polar format. Remember to review this material as often as you need to really drive it home. Imagine how well lab will go if you know what you're doing. Thank you very much for your attention and interest, and we'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your Lab partner about this resource, and be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates.